Phew, I've just finished writing the document I've been working on, right under the deadline. I have enough time to identify it as draft 2 using a watermark before I send it out for review. To do this, I click the Page Layout tab and, in the Page Background group, I click Watermark. I scroll down through the gallery of watermark choices and click Draft 1. There it is. The text Draft is subtly displayed diagonally in the background on every page of my document. But I want the watermark to read Draft 2 instead of simply Draft. I click Watermark again. Under the gallery of choices, I see the Remove Watermark command, which I can use if I ever want to get rid of a watermark I've inserted. But now, I click Custom Watermark. In the Printed Watermark dialog box, under Text Watermark, after the word Draft, I type the word 2. I'll change the font color to red, just to make sure you can see my work more clearly. Then, I click OK. Now, the watermark reads Draft 2 in red text. Notice that I need to be in Print Layout View or in Full Screen Reading View to see the watermark. If I switch to another view, such as Draft View, it isn't visible. Let me switch back to Print Layout View, where I can keep an eye on the watermark. As you can see, when I added the watermark, Word displayed it on all of the document's pages by default. But that's not the effect I want. Instead, I want the watermark to appear on my Table of Contents page only, not on my title page, or the pages after my Table of Contents. To do this, I have to first break the document into sections. In this case, one for the title page, one for the Table of Contents, and as many sections as I want to for the rest of the document. The reason for this will be clear shortly. Let me show you. To create the sections, I'm going to switch to Draft View and, on the Home tab, click Show Hide Paragraph Mark so that you can see the section breaks as I insert them. To put the title page in its own section, I'll delete the page break that separates it from the rest of the document and replace it with a section break. First, I select the page break and then press Delete. Then, I click the Page Layout tab and, in the Page Setup group, click Breaks. Under Section Breaks, I click Next Page. This tells Word to put the title page in its own section and to start the next section, the Table of Contents, at the top of the next page. I can easily see the double dotted lines of the section break. I place the Table of Contents page in its own section and on its own page in the same way. I won't show the steps again, but here's the section break that appears when I'm done. I'm going to switch back to Print Layout View now where I can see the watermark. Now, let me pause a minute to explain something a little tricky. To control in which sections I want a watermark to appear, I use the header and footer tools. That's because watermarks are linked to the header area. Let me show you how it works. To create separate watermarks for each section, I'll go to the Table of Contents page first and double-click in the header area to activate it. Notice this label that says, Same as Previous? This means that the Table of Contents page uses the same header as the title page, and therefore the same watermark. But if I click the Link to Previous button in the Navigation group, you'll see that the button is no longer selected. And voila! The label disappears, which means the headers and watermarks are no longer linked. I click Next Section to move to Section 3. Here again, I click Link to Previous to unlink this header and watermark from the previous one. Finally, I'm ready to delete the watermarks where I don't want them. Here in Section 3, with the header area still open, I simply right-click the watermark on the page to select it, and then click Cut to remove the watermark from Section 3. I click Previous Section twice to return to the title page. I delete the watermark on this page in the same way, by right-clicking the watermark, and then clicking Cut. The watermark disappears from Sections 1 and 3 but it still appears in Section 2, the Table of Contents. While I'm here, I can change the position of the watermark by first clicking to select it. I'll drag it up on the page and click the Rotate handle and change the angle of the text. I move the focus back to the main body of the document by going to the Close group and clicking Close Header and Footer. Finally, I'm going to add our company logo as a watermark on the title page. First, I click the title page. I click the Page Layout tab and, in the Page Background group, I click Watermark and then click 
Custom Watermark. This time, I click Picture Watermark, and then click Select Picture. I find the picture I want, and then click Insert. Notice that the Washout option is selected. That fades out the picture so it won't overwhelm the content on the page. Then I click OK. But this may be a little too washed out. I'll fix that by double-clicking in the header area so that I can select the watermark. Then I double-click the logo to show the Picture Tools tab. In the Adjust group, I click Brightness and preview the effect of different percentages of brightness on the picture. With the picture selected, I can resize it and move it on the page, just as I would any picture. When I inserted the logo as a watermark, Word placed it in all sections of the document. So, with the header area still activated, I scroll down to the next section, containing the table of contents, which currently displays the picture watermark on top of the text watermark. I right-click the logo and click Cut. To delete it. I continue in this way, deleting the logo in the remaining sections of the document. When I print the document, all of the watermarks in the document will print too. Why not give it a try yourself? You're just a few clicks away from adding a layer of information to your document.